Welcome guys to Amnesia Cole and it is 2020. The previous decade was a great one for gamers. I figured this would be the perfect time for me to do my video on my top 10 games of the decade. This was an incredibly hard list to put together. Remember, spoiler warning for parts of the story in each one of these games. So if you see a game you haven't played, then just skip past it to the next one. And yeah, let's get into it. If you've been watching my channel for a minute, then you'll know that I absolutely adore this game and that I already made a review on it, which will be up in the top right corner if you want to go watch it. So I'll keep this brief. Good and realistic voice acting, which is important because that was a problem that Life is Strange had. They actually captured the way that teenagers speak, which is something that not many games or even for that matter, TV shows and movies have been able to capture. And it actually feels like I'm playing as someone as and then just talking to my friends, it feels natural. A great story, it really puts you in the world, you get chills, it's just an amazing experience. The art design is just, it's it's delicious. It's the best I've ever seen. Oh, and I got it for free, it's $10 on Epic right now. If you, I definitely, definitely recommend it. This was actually the first Call of Duty game I've played since Black Ops 2, and it wasn't because I was riding a hate train following in the years after BO2 was released, I just didn't really feel the need to buy it anymore, but all that changed when Modern Warfare was announced. Usually I'm against pre-ordering, but this was a game that I just bought instantly after it was announced because I just had a feeling, and it turns out this is one of my favorite games to play this year. It has a really solid campaign, incredible graphics, and solid gameplay which makes it feel like a true refresh of the Modern Warfare series that we grew up with, with a 2019 touch to it. While there are still some problems with it, Honestly, compared to the problems that I had playing Fortnite in the last few seasons, it's small bugs, some weapons are a little overpowered, some are a little underpowered, um, but you know, just small things that can be fixed over updates, and honestly, I haven't had a problem with it, and I also, I haven't raged at all at this game, but even if I die or I go negative one game, I just still want to go and play, even if it's a different game mode, I still want to play, there's just so much to explore about this game, I love the weapon customization, kind of adds an RPG element to it, and in all honesty, I think this is probably going to be one of my most played games in the next few years. Anyone who knows me or even vaguely knows me knows that I'm a really big fan of science fiction and an even bigger fan of time travel as a concept, as well as superhero TV shows and movies. I always wondered what it would be like if the two of them meshed together, until 2016. Quantum Break is exactly how I envisioned time powers all my life, and so much more. First of all, the graphics are stylized in a way that looks really, really cool. I mean, just look at this. You can't, you can't just sit here and tell me that that doesn't look cool. And it's even cooler when you're controlling the person, stopping time, creating time time bubbles and time shields, going through stutters, and if it wasn't just that, they added a TV show with almost a book's worth of lore and reading materials, audio clips, like all over the map, like literally littered around the map. They even released a Quantum Break book which I own and I thought was pretty good. One of my favorite scenes is when Will goes into Ground Zero and sees an entire history of a place just unfold and refold back. He gets to see this new side of his brother that he never saw before. And honestly, it's really, really cool. I mean, just look, this is an effect I have never seen anywhere else in media. Let me know in the comments, but I've never seen this anywhere else. I honestly could go all day about this game, but we got seven more games, so. This is one of those games where you like you play five minutes of it and then you say nah this ain't for me I'm kind of bored of this but then one day like three months later you're bored out of your mind and then you remember hey I have this game I might as well play it and that was actually one of the best decisions and I definitely did not regret it. This is a much longer campaign than I originally thought going into the game and honestly it felt like an adventure. Something I think the movie really didn't capture was the absolute size of the island. It felt like more of a narrative driven drama version of Just Cause minus the explosions and honestly that's what I love about it. Now listen, I know what you guys are going to say about this, but honestly, my main point for this is how massive it was. In 2018, Fortnite was the biggest game that entire year, and it changed the landscape and popularized the Battle Royale genre in a way that Apex Legends and PUBG just couldn't do. Now for this, I'm mainly talking about seasons 3 through 7, because after 7, I really stopped enjoying the game, but those 4 seasons that I did play heavily i had some of the most fun i've had this decade even if i wasn't the best at it we still had fun and that was really what was kind of important about it
Now this is another late runner of the decade, but it's a meaningful one. I struggled between this game and Just Cause 3 because at the end of the day, it just came down to replay value. After I beat Just Cause 3 and all the DLC, there wasn't really much for me to do after that. Once I finished everything Just Cause 4 had to offer story-wise, I still find myself playing it to this day. Also, the explosions feel a lot better, more volumetric. This is what Just Cause was meant to be. I know a lot of people disagree and say, well, 3 was better. I definitely enjoyed 3, but 4 just raised the bar even more for me, and that's honestly why it's in this list and not through. Life is Strange is another game that benefits from a really good fleshed out story. I also like how the episodes work, but it's not the whole game at once because if given the whole game, I will beat it or I'll at least try to beat it in one day. I don't know what that is with me. I I know I should, probably should space it out. Like if it's a narrative game, I probably should space it out to make it last longer, but I mean, that's just me. I'll I'll buy a game, start it, and then end it within the next, like, few hours. It, it just depends on what the game is. It was an amazing experience. And just the vibes that you get from playing the game, the soundtrack fits perfectly, that kind of, like, carefree attitude, like, I don't care what you say. Even though I didn't like the second game, which was Before the Storm, I still enjoyed playing that, if that makes any sense. Like, I know it's kind of contradicting, but it was just so peaceful playing it. I felt rebellious. There's nothing really to explain the feeling that I get playing Life is Strange games just in general. Any Life is Strange game uh, developed by Don't Nod, it's just that whole universe is just in its own world that just feels so nice to play. I, there's no other way I can explain it. Only thing that was kind of off, like I mentioned before, was the dialogue. It felt pretty dated, although this was a French studio trying to emulate American slang in 2013, so I guess I'll give it a pass. If you've been watching my channel for a while or even looked at a few of my videos, you'd know that I love Watch Dogs, the entire franchise. And between Xbox and PC, I easily have upwards of 1,500 hours. And that might seem like a lot for a game with limited DLC and an average size campaign. Honestly, 60% of those hours are really just me driving around the world, messing with civilians, listening to music, not even thinking about the mission. And that is definitely this game's strong suit. The world is so immersive to make me feel like I'm actually in a place I've never been. And I talk more about this in my top 10 gaming worlds video. Definitely, um, I say the story in this game wasn't as good as the first game, but it still held up. And I just, I love the graphics. I love the characters. Um, the experiences are nice. It just feels so, I don't know how to explain it. Like you ever have that feeling that's like you're cozy. I, I don't, there's no other way for me to explain the feeling that I get playing the game, but I just feel, it just feels so nice to play the game. Now I thought about this for a pretty long time, but number two has to be Watch Dogs because it feels so much more real if that makes any sense. Not to discredit the second game, but this game is definitely a lot darker and while there are a few issues like the graphics that people were getting mad about after E3, but it's not enough to break the immersion for me and the world is set in a place I've been to multiple times and it feels so rewarding to chase down criminals in a dark alley. It it really makes you feel like you're the fox. You're like you're this vigilante that is trying to avenge his niece. Also, I played this game right when I started getting into music, so most of my music taste is heavily influenced by the in-game radio. It doesn't feel dated at all, even though it was released in 2014. I still listen to quite a few of the songs because honestly, listening to those songs that you listen to while you were playing the game, I don't know if it's like a psychology thing, but I do this with all my games. Even if it's like a specific made OST if it's not actual commercially licensed music if it's like an OST like Breath of the Wild Minecraft like I'll listen to that stuff while I'm just while I'm doing homework or while I'm working or, or working out or, or whatever right because it, it brings you it like kind of invokes those memories that you had while playing the game and it gets you hyped up and it's just such a great feeling the feeling that you get when you boot up the game and you hear the music and you see the Ubisoft logo is just unparalleled for me personally which is why it's in the number two spot Hey everybody, RoboGamer, welcome back to the RoboGamer Show, and today we're going to be playing a little Xbox Minecraft. Hello, this is Stampy, and welcome to a Minecraft Let's Play video, and another video inside of Stampy's lovely world. Hey everybody, RoboGamer, welcome back to the RoboGamer Show, and today I'm going to be joining you on a whole different new series. It's it's a, it's about a three second delay um, on what I'm doing on the screen and then what I'm doing actually, but it, but it won't matter because I'm, um... So this is, uh, TU31 Let's Play, which I will be doing with, uh, Coder1914. Uh, he's, he's right here and all his... Or Nizio Code Red, as he likes to be called.
called now. Might be lagging because of his connection, but 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 we'll, we'll figure that out sometime. Hey everybody, I'm Robo Gamer. Welcome back to Robo Gamer Show. And today, I have a Minecraft video that is not laggy. Look at the 60 FPS. You can uh, change the quality to 60 FPS. It, no, like the the other stuff in the package is not in the box. All right, we'll return it then. Oh wait, there it is. Oh, my that sounds like something that's acted earlier. Huh? It was not there, it just spawned in. Okay. I think everyone coming into this video probably saw this coming, but Minecraft is a game I never get tired of. I usually have over 3,000 hours in it between the Xbox 360 version and PC, and with it recently coming back in popularity this year, I have to literally make myself stop playing. There are so many aspects of this game. If you get tired of playing the vanilla version of the game, then there are mods for literally anything you can think about. There's texture packs, there's shader packs, there's so much customization. And if you don't like the blocky textures, you can. there's literally a mod for that. There's shaders that make it look incredible, RTX Minecraft, there's no other game I've played that allows me to have such creative freedom, and you might think with low resolution textures and blocky game mechanics that you'd be limited, but at this point, Minecraft is the biggest game in the world, and you've probably seen some of the creations people have made. Like, I've literally seen pictures of people who've recreated entire mountain ranges, and I had to do double take. Is that real or is that in Minecraft? I mean, that's the point we're at in 2019. It's just incredible what people can do. There's literally a Minecraft server that I've been playing on recently called EarthMC that recreated the world to a 1 to 500 scale and they have their own lores, communities, like every town has their own Discord server. They've had past wars, alliances, and it's really a testament to how far you can go with Minecraft. And that is why this is my game of the decade. Yes, I know it was technically released in, uh, what was it, pre-alpha in 2009, but the beta came out in 2010. So I'm gonna count it. And it's just... It would it would have been too it would have been a disservice even if it did come out and like fully came out in 2009 I still would have added it because it's just it's the biggest game it honestly it really is the biggest game but yeah there you go those are my top 10 games of the decade hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know your top 10 down in the comments and I'll see you guys later peace.